It's week eight of the NFL, and we give you our best three bets for this Sunday, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandstandBetters.com and we give you our best three bets for NFL Week 8. But before we get into those picks and predictions, first make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't miss free picks, predictions, and contests throughout the entire NFL season. And while you're at it, smash that like button if you are ready for another full Sunday of NFL football. I know I am. So without further ado, let's dive in to week eight of the NFL and start with the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Philadelphia Eagles in that 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Eagles are favored by 10 and a half points and the over under is set at 42.5 at the moment. Now the Steelers and their fans, they come into this week at a disappointing two and five on the season after losing to the Miami Dolphins last week. One might say they have been a hard team to predict as they just came off beating Tom Brady and the Bucks a couple weeks ago, but it does look like beating the Bucks is a common theme for teams this season. Kenny Pickett, although just a rookie and four games into his career, maybe has fans second guessing that pick in the draft. He is struggling, having thrown seven interceptions already with three last week against the Dolphins. Now, let's be honest, Mitch Trubisky is not a viable option either for Mike Tomlin, and this team will just have to pick their poison as they go throughout the rest of the season. The craziest thing is that the last two games that Pickett has played, every possession in with the offense, he has thrown the ball a hundred times. There are positives though. He has a 68.5 completion percentage and, okay, there's one positive. He will have to throw the ball because their rushing attack is awful. Harris only averaging 3.3 yards per carry. And honestly, Jalen Warren looks like he may be the better back at the moment. I know with guys like Pickens, Claypool, Johnson, and Fryermuth, they want to throw the football, but this week, they are going up against an Eagles defense that has a top five secondary. And speaking of the Eagles, they are the only undefeated team left in the NFL at 6-0, and they're coming off a bye week. Honestly, looking at their schedule, the next real challenge might not come till Thanksgiving weekend against the Packers. And the way the Packers are playing this season, we're using the word challenge loosely there. Jalen Hurts throwing the ball for 1,500 yards with Brown, Smith, and Goddard accounting for nearly 1,200 of those receiving yards. But the catalyst of this offense has been their rushing attack. They do a nice job pounding the football on the ground to really open up big plays down the field in their passing game. Now, they do this by running with backs who are fresh each and every play. Sanders, Gainwell, and Hurts all getting involved. These three combined have over 850 rushing yards on the season, averaging for a combined over four yards per carry, and they have 12 touchdowns. This week, the Steelers, who have a decent rushing attack, might be able to keep them at bay for a while, but once Hurts and the Eagles open up their offense, they should feast on the fourth worst secondary in the NFL. So, what's our best bet here for Steelers and Eagles? Well, the Steelers, for some reason, like to throw the ball with Pickett, and they're going to be trailing in this game. So, look for Pickett to, again, have to throw another 40 to 45 times in this one. The Eagles will chew up this clock with their run game, but when they throw the football, they have massive plays down the field. The Eagles are fifth in the NFL in yards per pass, and Brown, Smith, and Goddard have combined for 18 receptions over 20 yards already on the season. Look for the Eagles to put up around their average of 26 to 28 points here, and for Pickett and the Steelers to add 14 or 17. This game is going to have to be a sweat in our opinion for this one, but our first best bet for NFL week number eight, we're going to take the Steelers and the Eagles over 42 and a half points. Now, with our second matchup for Week 8 in the NFL, we're going to take a look at the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Minnesota Vikings, also in that 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Vikings at the moment, 3.5-point favorites, over-under set at 48.5. Now, the Cardinals are coming off a great win last week on Thursday Night Football against the Saints, and now sit at 3-4 and four in a bad division with hopes on maybe turning things around and making a playoff push. 
The difference maker last week, DeAndre Hopkins. Coming off that suspension, he has 10 catches for 103 yards in his first game back. And honestly, the offense just looked much better with him. We're not going to get into how the Cardinals have been all season long with their offense because Hopkins, with him now honestly back, it makes a huge difference in those first six weeks we're going to throw out the window. And they're going up against one of the worst defenses in the NFL this week. Vikings giving up 385 yards per game and our fifth worst in the NFL giving up about 275 passing yards per game. Murray, who has thrown for nearly 1,700 yards this season, should have a field day as he does a nice job spreading the ball around in that passing attack. Brown, Ertz, Dorch, Moore, and Benjamin, and Hopkins, and Connor, they all have over 100 yards receiving. But the Vikings are coming off a of bye week as the last game they played was against the Dolphins a few weeks ago when they did win that one to push them to 5-1 and one on the season. They now have a two and a half game lead over the Packers in the NFC North. Honestly, we think this record is a little bit of a facade. The only game that they won that wasn't decided by one possession uh, was in week one against the Packers. This team has also played a fairly easy schedule. Since week three, they have faced the Lions, Saints, Bears, and Dolphins. Kirk Cousins' stats are also not jumping off the page at anyone. He honestly has only thrown nine TDs. He has five interceptions, again, with 1,500 passing yards. Even though Dalvin Cook is averaging nearly five yards per carry, the Vikings still have the eighth worst rushing offense in the league. They don't even get 100 yards per game. And most likely, that's not going to change this week as the Cardinals' rushing defense is fantastic. They held Kamara to 49 yards and McCaffrey to 27 yards a few weeks ago. Like the Vikings, though, Arizona's defense, their weakness lies in their secondary. They're giving up 260 yards through the air per game. So, what is our best bet in Cardinals-Vikings this week? Well, as we just alluded to, look for the Vikings offense to throw the ball against a bad secondary. They already throw the ball 38 times per game, and with deep threats like Jefferson and Thalen, they could have some big plays down the field. The Cardinals, they're going to do the same thing. In fact, they average over 40 times per game throwing the ball, and although the Vikings right now are only giving up 19 points per game, again, look at their opponents and offenses they have faced. Minnesota is last in the NFL, giving up 80% TD rate inside the red zone. And even though they are coming off a bye week, let's remember Arizona also had a long rest on Thursday night football. With both of these teams' offenses throwing the ball and both of these defenses not knowing how to defend the passing attack with our second best bet for week number eight in the NFL, we're going to take the Cardinals and the Vikings over 48 and a half points. Now, before we get into our final pick for Week 8 in the NFL, just a reminder, if you are looking for our Week 8 full card, head on over to GrandstandBetters.com, become part of our family. Links below in the description, and we look forward to you joining our community real soon. But we do have one more best bet for Week 8, and that is going to be in the Giants versus Seahawks game in the 4 p.m. Eastern time slot. Seahawks minus 3-point favorites here, over-under set at 44.5. Now, the Giants are on a four-game winning streak and sit half a game back of the Eagles in the NFC East. This team has been a bit surprising, but again, for us, a little bit of a facade here. The combined record for all teams they have faced to this point is 24-25 and 25 on the year, and every single game they have played has been decided by one possession. This offense is 100% led by their rushing attack with Barkley and Jones combining for over 1,150 yards on the season and seven touchdowns. They also average a combined 5.5 yards per carry, which has them as the second best rushing attack in the NFL just behind the Bears. The difference, though, between the Giants and the Bears is that the Giants have Daniel Jones, who protects the football much more than Fields, and when Jones is needed to throw the football, he has a much better completion percentage at 66.7. Now, this Giants rushing attack should be salivating at the opportunity to face a Seattle rushing defense that is third worst in the league giving up 150 yards per game on the ground. Speaking of the Seahawks, they have to be the surprise team of the NFC and maybe the NFL at this point. They are 4-3 and three on the season with Geno Smith at the helm. They're coming off a decisive win against the Chargers, 37-23, to and are top five in scoring in the NFL at 26.1 points per game. 
And it's been a balanced attack for them. Geno Smith has thrown for 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, but the unreal stat for him has been his completion rate at 73.5%. Just unreal when you think about a guy that was written off years ago, including us. I wrote that guy off a long time ago. But he has shown my, probably most improved player of the season thus far. Add in a rushing attack, a Walker and Penny, who both combined for over six yards per carry. You have yourself the ingredients of what is now a first place team in the NFC West. The Giants, like Seattle, have an awful rushing defense, giving up over 144 yards per game on the ground and a league worst 5.7 yards per carry again. So look for Seattle to also run the football from the get-go. So what is our best bet in this matchup between two surprising playoff contenders in the NFC? Well, honestly, this has to be the hardest game on the slate to figure out. And the only reason we can figure out why maybe the Giants are three-point underdogs in this situation is because of the environment they have to play in. Seattle is loud. Trust us, it's the loudest stadium we've ever been in. And on the field, you cannot hear a thing Seattle's going to come out in this one and try to gain a lead so that Daniel Jones has to throw the football and that's how the Giants are going to have to beat them. Honestly, within the environment, the Seahawks have the upper hand here in our opinion. But if you're giving me three points with the Giants, that's hard to pass up uh, in a possible low scoring game with both teams rushing the field and taking time off the clock. So with our third best bet of NFL week number eight, we're going to actually take the Giants plus three over the Seahawks. Now, normally we would be streaming the Cleveland Browns game on Sunday for you all, but as you know, they play on Monday night. And normally we would be streaming the Monday night football game, but we're going to the Monday night football game, Browns, Bengals, in First Energy Stadium. We will be there live. Join us on our TikTok. We'll probably go live at some point on our TikTok as well. So, hey, as always, sit back relax, enjoy week eight in the NFL, and have a great Halloween.